We present Wacko, starring Professor Jimmy Edwards and featuring the staff and pupils of Chiselbury School for the Sons of Gentlefolk. Sons who often return in later years to gaze nostalgically at the hallowed old pile which still stands just beyond the great wrought iron gate, and which the dustman still refused to cart away. Nothing but the best is Chiselbury's proudest boast, and it's best exemplified when, at the present, the school is being visited by Mr. Anthony Dorchester of the Alma Mater Scholastic Supplies Company. Try this one, Professor. A little wonder whack. I'll take half a dozen. They should last until about Thursday. <laughs> no one else do you want? Pen nibs, exercise books, golf posts, cool belts. No, no, all right for them. We've got a special offer of dead frogs for cutting up in biology. Oh, for well, goodness sake, no more of them. Last time, you, you delivered them to the kitchen door. First time we've ever had toad in a hole with real toad. <laughs> Very good, Professor. In that case, I'll call again next... Uh... Oh, uh, just before I go, have a glance at this that I've got in my case. Give yourself a treat. Oh. There. This is the academic hood worn on ceremonial occasions by those teachers possessing the highest scholastic degree of PhD. Yeah, well, that's not me. I'm what you might term one degree under. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lovely thing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Why don't you slip it up? Oh, may I? Oh, please. An obligation to purchase? Just the art teacher. Right, then here we go. There we are. <laughs> How's that? Mm. Oh, crap. Better, it's you! You think it's me? Oh, think so? Well, I do not wish to be fooled some, but if ever a man looked up top of PhD. Oh. <laughs> How very kind of you. I bet it costs the earth. But worth every penny. You see, when prospective parents come down to view the school, think how impressed they'd be to see you wearing it. Oh, yes, it sort of might help to take their minds off the state of the ablution. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, with the hood comes a stout cardboard box and the PhD degree itself. Oh, really? From an acknowledged university? One of the finest in Puerto Rico. Oh. <laughs> Must say it's a temptation. <laughs> what are you asking? Oh. A paltry mere twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five smackers? Hmm. It was impossible. I suppose you don't do a PhD on the HP. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, our terms are strictly net cap. Mm. You ought to know that. What? We've been doing business together ever since you were headmaster of that council school on the Arrow Road. He says, I hope you did. If you don't mind, I always say that I was headmaster of Harrow. <laughs> 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 I never bother mentioning the road part. <laughs> Be that as it may, arrow or arrow, it's a 25 nicker cat. Mm. Here, oh look, look, I'll bet I'll be back, eh? I'll just put it away again. Mm. Don't want to tantalize you, do oh, I hate to see that lovely. I hate to see it go. You know. <laughs> look, Mr. Dodger, please be reasonable. I mean, I mean, where can I lay my hands on 25 pounds? <laughs> Excuse me, Headmaster. What is it, Potter? Uh, would you lock this away in the cash box? It's the money that Lumley and Catmill collect for lower third outing this term. Oh, is it? <laughs> Money? Oh, uh, well, uh, how much? It's exactly 25 pounds. Oh! <laughs> I'll just leave it on your desk here. Good. Goodbye, Mr. Dorchester. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. No, 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 no. No, it's not my money, Dorchester. It belongs to the boy. Well, uh, what's the money for? Well, it's an old school tradition, actually. The boys in each form, they collect among themselves. For a class outing, you see, yes. which is held on Founders Day. That's next month. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what it is, the sort of thing. The lower third go to a circus. Mm -hmm. The lower fourth go to the zoo. Mm -hmm. The upper sixth go to the windmill. I mean, you know. <laughs> but uh, not until next month, you say. Well, I think, yes, it's true. It does give me four weeks to sort of put the money back. And then... No, 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 it's wrong. How can I take money from my own people? Well, come on, how? <laughs> well, Professor, you're only borrowing, and I think the boys would want you to have the use of that money. This is true, it's true. I mean, if I were to ask them. Now, if I were to say to them, Lad, do you mind if I borrow that money you've saved up for your annual outing? What would they reply? <laughs> A little swine. <laughs> oh, I'll teach them to use that kind of language. Don't just take that money and give me that hood. Here we are, Professor. Allow me to help you on with it. Yes. There. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You've made a very wise buy there. Mm. It's definitely you all over. Mm. And now, goodbye to you, Dr. Edwards. Goodbye. 
Dr. Edward Thorpe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernowski. <laughs> I really must take issue with you over this question of Epstein's theory. <laughs> As I see it, Bernowski, on the one hand, we have a finite universe. On the other hand, we have merely... Four weeks. <laughs> Only four weeks. Well, really, it's more. It's nearly five, really. You say five weeks. Ample time to put the money back. Ample time. <laughs> oh, hit Martha. Oh, hit Martha. Oh, isn't that magnificent? <laughs> May I touch? What, this old thing? <laughs> it's just my PhD word. I... I can't know, throw it on for lounging in. I, I used to wear it a lot at my last school. Is it fur? No, just up the Harrow Road. <laughs> and then I said, wait, what? I see what oh, fur, yes. But it's, it's ermine. Oh. It is, it is ermine, Potter. The skins of pure white erms. <laughs> it's all right, get your sweaty hands off it. So what do you want, anyway? Well, Headmaster, I was wondering whether you could receive the lower third class outing committee. I'd be glad to receive the, 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 the old one. This, uh, Lumley and Taplow. You know the, the two boys who collect that money you put in the cash box? Yes. What are they here now for? I mean, the outing's up till next month. Well, perhaps they'd better come in and explain that themselves. Yes, sir. Uh, Lumley, uh, Taplow. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Sir, we'd like to change the date of our class after. Oh, change the date? Oh, well, that's all right. I mean, I mean, you want to make it later. When do you want to have it? In January? February? Next August? No, sir. Next Saturday. Next Saturday? Yes, sir. There's a model train exhibition on in London, then. We've all decided we'd much rather go to that on Saturday than to the circus next month. I mean, I mean, this can't be true. I mean, well, for your own sake, I mean, lad, I mean, think of what you'll miss. I mean, you love the circus, don't you? <laughs> Don't you remember the fun we had there last year? The Liberty Horses? <laughs> oh, that's just the performing sea lads. Oh, no, 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 no. The clowns? Remember the clowns? <laughs> that's all settled then. We'll go to the circus then. No, sir. But, but you must. I mean, uh, think of the acrobats, the ringmaster. We the... don't want to go to the circus, sir. We want to go to the model train exhibition on Saturday. That is all, sir. It's our money, not yours. Oh. If I may intervene, Headmaster, I think that remark borders on insolence. If I were you, sir, I'd teach them a sharp lesson. Yes, I tell you, well, shall. I'd cancel the outing altogether. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I shall do. Well, thank you for your suggestion, Mr. Bonnie. You're very helpful indeed. Do you hear that, boys? For your insolence, I shall cancel the outing altogether. Give them their money back. And I shall give you the money. <laughs> Mr. Potter! And I want your suggestions, I'll ask for them. I... Oh, shut up! I... No. Look, chap, forget all that. I mean, let's talk this whole thing over chap to chap, eh, chap? There's no talking over to be done, sir. If we can't go on Saturday, our money back, please. I see. And suppose I said that I, I won't give it back. No, you must. It's our money. And I am your headmaster. I can confiscate things. Money that belongs to the boys, sir. Hmm. I wonder what my father would say if I wrote and told him you'd done that. Your father? My father, sir. The chairman of the school governor, sir. Lumley, are you threatening me? Yes, sir. <laughs> that was rather the impression I got. <laughs> I, I bet you really thought I was serious, then. Weren't you, sir? <laughs> serious. <laughs> you know what an old tease I am. <laughs> no, no, you run along, lads, and don't worry. Of course you can go to your train thing on Saturday. <laughs> now, get on! Saturday. Where the devil am I going to get 25 quid by Saturday? Oh, look at that. Two o'clock in the morning and I'm still at it. Where were we? Mm. Let's read this out again. Distinguished classical scholar wishes to dispose of all his valuable personal effects before Saturday. Collection includes seven unused detergent coupons, <laughs> valued at fourpence each, one large moustache nude mint condition, <laughs> one second-hand identity disc, snip for anyone named J.K.O. apostrophe N. Edwards, 
pair of pants today. We put a shirt around the man, small hole in the pants. <laughs> What's the use, honestly, when you add it up? I mean, I doubt if I'll get more than one of nine for a lot. There must be some way of getting 25 quid in a hurry. Oh, well. Get that over the best. Something will turn up, I think. Oh, who's that? Me, Nathan. Something has turned up. <laughs> Wacko. <laughs> Come in, Nathan. Did I wake you up, Jim? No, 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 no. I'm not a bit tired. No, no, no. I... <laughs> Come in. Come in. That's it. Yes. <laughs> now, what is it, my dear? Did you have a bad dream? <laughs> Let me make it come true. <laughs> Jim, don't muck about. Don't go, Jim. There's somebody downstairs. They won't hear us. <laughs> Somebody in your study. Well, I heard a noise coming from there. As if somebody was moving around. Listen. Did you hear it? A sort of creak. Uh, calm yourself, my dear. It's very easy for someone to wake up in the night and get peculiar notions. <laughs> it happens to me frequently. <laughs> Mate, did you know that you've got everything a man hungers for? Oh. Warmth, charm, personality, beauty. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to have 25 quid as well, would you? Oh, Jim, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Don't you understand what I'm trying to yes, tell you? Yes, of course I do. You're always trying it. Oh, well. <laughs> there, there it is again. Ah, go for heaven's sake, Rachel. Don't try to get behind me while I'm trying to get behind you. <laughs> We've do ourselves a permanent injury here. Somebody in the corridor. There's no need to panic. Now, just go to the fireplace and give me the, the heavy poker. Right. He's just outside the door. That's right now. The knob's turning. You see? You can see that. I've got the poker. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I've got you. Ow! 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 Oh, my heart, Dan! Ow! Oh, ow! Oh, 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 oh. How can I shoot when I'm in mortal agony? Ow! Oh, 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 oh. He's coming in. I'll get him with this chair. Now! Oh, do let me help you with that chair. Oh. Much too heavy for you. Potter, what the... Excuse me, Headmaster. I hope I'm not intruding. I burnt my fingers! Oh, really? I warned you you'd go too far with me from one of them. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop gibbering and jabbering about. What's the idea of creeping around my bedroom like the bride of Dracula here? Yes, I, I almost forgot, Headmaster. I looked out my window, and in your study... There's somebody prowling around with a sword. What? There's Jim, I told you. What are we going to do? He's absolutely icy calm. We can overpower him just as long as we keep our heads. Potter, yes. you take the poker. It's cool off now. <laughs> Mason, you take the torch. Right. Now, this may well mean bloodshed, so I'll take these. Oh, knuckles up, Jim. No, they're bicycle clips, actually. <laughs> I'll strike over to the police station and get oh, a little help. you don't. Oh, no, Headmaster, don't leave us. All right, you coward. I'll do it all myself, then. So let's see this call to the old, the old gun in the dressing gown pocket, I think. Oh, we haven't got a gun. We don't need one. Don't worry, my dear old Jim. There's a trick or two. Come on, let's get him. Well, I don't know where he keeps all the stuff. Must be a face somewhere, but... All right, Ooh. double. Oh, I got you covered. You keep that torch on so I can see you. Otherwise, this little beauty in my pocket is liable to go off. <laughs> it's fully loaded, too. What? Your finger? I... Oh. <laughs> Mason, you told me you darned it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Jim. Well, Potty may as well put the lights on. He's got us. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Gus. I went off for violence. Just give me a chance. I wasn't doing nothing on it. Just... Lummy. It's the headmaster. Yes, indeed, I'm the headmaster. Wait a minute. I know your face. Well, of course you do, sir. Don't tell me, don't tell me. 1947, uh, sir. Arrow Road School. Top of oh, course. Uh, d d d Ginger Perkins. <laughs> School captain. That's right, sir. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> this, is, this is really good and kind of you. School captain. That's right, sir. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> this, is, this is really good and kind of you, Perkins. So few of my old boys bothers look me up after they leave. Well, sir, this uh, isn't exactly... Uh, first of all, I'm afraid we owe you an apology. I mean, these two here stupidly thought that, that you were a bug. <laughs> sir, 
Uh, I, I am a burglar. Uh, you what? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid so, sir. No, I, I can't believe it. One of my old boys turned into crime. A master, yes, but I mean... <laughs> well, I, I didn't know it was you I was robbing, sir. I swear it. I just had to get some money, sir. All I've had to eat since yesterday is a, a cup of coffee. And I... Uh, oh, oh, no. James, you quick head, Martin. Now's your chance. Oh, yes, Jim. Ring for the police. Oh, no, Mason, I couldn't. But it's our duty as citizens, head, Martin. Yes, that's right, Jim. Come on, let's turn him over. No, he looks better face down. <laughs> or outcast society. Oh, I'm sorry I've done that. Oh, oh, I'm so hungry and exhausted. Do you think I could have that cushion, Miss? Oh, yes. No, don't let him do yes. that. <laughs> Mason, go into the kitchen and put on a pot of tea. And see if you've got any of those stale Gary Baldies left. Oh, all right, Jim. I'll see what I can do. Come on, Potter. Let's, let's have him into a chair. Come on, Jim. Oh, That's it. We shouldn't be doing this, Headmaster. It's harboring a criminal. Oh, Potter, who are we? Who are we to pass judgment just because a man steals something? Is he a criminal? Definitely. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> What's more, Potter? I've had a sudden joyful feeling. But it was a kindly providence that sent a burglar up my drain pipe. <laughs> Would you leave me alone with him, please? Go on, go on. Help Matron sort out her Garibaldi's. <coughs> and this young gent was right, sir. You should turn me in. Never mind all that sentimental gut. Now, look here, Perkins. If a bloke like you pinches something from a house, does the householder get it back in full from the insurance? Oh, yes, sir. It was probably. <laughs> I knew it. But mind you, sir, I've known our soldiers do a really terrible thing. Yes? Well, when they fill in the claim form for what's been stolen, they add a lot of things which they never even possess. What? And it works? Well, if the burglar ain't caught, how did the insurance company know any different? What a vile, dishonest, unworthy, foolproof scheme. <laughs> oh, Ginger. Ginger! My fallen sparrow. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to let you go. Oh, sir. Oh, sir, you are a tough. There's one thing that I'd like you to do before you leave. Just for old time's sake, steal a little something on your way out. Steal something, sir, from you. That's right. Here, this vase will do. Oh, no, sir. No? I couldn't steal from you, sir. Not from my old headmaster. Low, I may have... But, Perkins, I want you to, you must. I just couldn't, sir. I'd never be able to live with myself. Well, live with somebody else. I don't care who you are. But for goodness sake, take it. Oh, don't ask me to, please, sir. Look, if, if you do steal something from me, you can get me out of a lot of trouble. Now, just take it. I can't, sir. Not, sir. Not, not with your reproachful eyes looking at me. All right, I'll take me reproachful eyes away. Look, I'll turn my back on it. Oh, that's right, sir. You stay like that for just a minute, sir. <coughs> oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I had to do it. I had to cost you for your own good, sir. Goodbye, sir, and thank you. Uh, uh. Here we are, nice and soft. Oh, 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 yes, oh. master. Oh, dead. Uh. I could never have left him alone with that. Oh. Uh. Oh. Yes, master, speak to me. Say something. Uh, you're standing on my ruddy hand. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. The vase, it's still there. He didn't take it. He didn't take anything. Oh, thank heaven. What do you mean, thank heaven, you crop it in? I'm ruined. Wait, Martha, I don't understand. You never understand anything. You don't even understand the weather report. <laughs> you may as well know it'll be all over the Sunday papers soon enough. That 25 quid for the lower third outing. I spent it. You have it. Don't argue with me. I have it. <laughs> I know when I've spent something and you just stand there like a nit saying you haven't. I have. I spent it. When Saturday comes around and Lumley finds out it'll be, just to use the old academic phrase, goodbye, mister, you've had your chips. <laughs> oh, headmaster, it mustn't happen. Whatever you've done, I don't care. I'll always stand by you. Oh, Potter, you should have a little lion stamped right there. <laughs> right between the eyes. Because you're a good egg. But it's no use, you see. It's no use. If only Ginger had pinched something tonight, we could have finagled the money out of the insurance claim. Now there's no way to get them to... Wait a minute. Yes, of course. Oh, what a blessing it is to be born with dishonest tendencies. 
it, Martha. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I'm frightened already. Listen, listen Potter, suppose we make a claim anyway. We've definitely had a burglar visit us, haven't we? I mean, I, I've got marks all up my drain pipe. <laughs> But he had master. Nothing's been stolen. Well, we'll pretend it has. I mean, it should be easy enough to invent a list of stolen articles. I mean, I, I, I can do it, so long as you help me. But that means I'd be an accessory. Well, if you're using accessory in the sense of a spare part. <laughs> You've been a spare part for years. <laughs> no, 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 let's get moving now. Now, you'll find the claim forms in the bottom drawer. I'll start the ball rolling by reporting the burglary. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Rick Change. Sorry if I woke you up, Flossie. Uh, I want Constable Dumpkins of the Chiswick Constabulary. Oh, he's there with you, is he? <laughs> well, anyway, tell Constable Dumpkins to put his helmet on and get on the blur. Hello, Officer Dumpkins. This is Professor Edward Sharp. I wish to report that I've been severely broken and entered. On the front page, a big photo of old Jim himself. What does it say? Professor Edwards, who is pictured above, stated that he cannot bear to think how many priceless valuables were taken by the thief. Gosh. He described the burglar as a tall, one-eyed Chinaman with a wooden leg. <laughs> That's funny. It sounds exactly like Fu Wong. Fu Wong? In this man's Sexton Blake. Jim confiscated it from me yesterday. There's nothing else. Just that Jim is frustrated with grief at his loss. The treasures of a lifetime have vanished overnight, he sobbed. Sobbed? Poor old Jim. Oh, the man who broke the back of the insurance. Oh, what did I tell you, brother? I fooled a lot of them. Oh, there were tears. There were genuine tears in Constable Dumpkin's eyes. Oh, what an actor they lost in me. Oh, oh, oh. I could have been, I could have been another Donald Wolfenden. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was petrified. I, I couldn't stand any more questions, Ed Moss. I really couldn't. The insurance company's got our claim and the check should arrive any post now. And then it's hey-ho for the model train exhibition tomorrow and nobody's the wiser. But the claim for much more than you originally intimated it would be. You said you only wanted 25 pounds. My dear Potter, your thing is worth doing. It's worth doing well. <laughs> well I can assure you that an insurance company is worth doing. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Jim. Oh, uh, Mason, have you changed your mind and decided to come on the outing with us? Good for you, gal. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, won't you rock me, matron? Oh, won't you rock me? Oh, yes, sir. Not what I came in for. Oh, There's a man from the insurance company to see you. There you are, he's delivering the money in person. Oh. He says he's what's called an investigator. Well, that's marvellous. I... <laughs> what was that ugly word? Investigator, he's come to investigate your claim. Oh, stop that, Potter. Oh. You've got to keep your head. Send him in, Mason. All right, you. <coughs> this is probably just a formality. <laughs> I have a complete answer to any queries he might raise. Send him for. Mr. Harbord of the insurance company. Good morning, Headmaster. Good morning. Yes. I'm sorry to trouble you, but there are a few items on this very heavy claim of yours about which, well, the head office is a little um, unhappy. Uh, Mr. Harbord. Deep down inside, we're all unhappy. Eh? <laughs> it's a symptom of the times we live in. No doubt. You've claimed on item number 152, <laughs> one silk-lined opera cloak with astrakhan facings and platinum toggles. <laughs> oh, oh. No, no, Papa, there you are. No use distressing yourself. What's gone is gone. He loved to see me in that opera cloak, Mr. Hubbard. I used it, you know, for taking the upper fifth music appreciation class. This time they're doing the Rosen Cauliflower, you know. Uh, now, item 212. The one you have down as solid gold cigarette case inscribed to the only man I ever loved with an engine turned class. <laughs> Harbour, you're not going to query that, are you? Well, Professor Edwards, you state it's a present from your wife. 
But according to your policy, you have remained a bachelor. And a ruddy good policy it is, too. <laughs> I mean, something I should have said, yes. I should have said, ex wife. Potter will vouch to see this, won't you, Potter? Me? This is a complete surprise. Potter, Potter, you're letting the shock of this robbery unnerve you. Of course, you remember my dear late Molly. No man never had a more devoted companion and helpmate. Eh? Helpmate, mate, help. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Yes, Mr. Harbord. I'll bounce for Professor Edwards and his beloved Nelly. Polly! <laughs> Molly! Oh, Molly! Oh, Nelly, that's the one. It, Molly was the one. Oh, I'm well, even assuming, assuming that I passed that item, I should like some proof of the purchase of this one. Sixty-five pounds for Mr. Potter's camel hair overcoat. Oh, no. Hit Mark, you haven't dragged me into this. I refuse. Ow! Oh, I do. I do apologize. Did I accidentally drive this pen nib into the back of your hand? <laughs> I'm quite lost since that rotten burglar took my favorite antique inkwell. Oh, yes. The alabaster man. Name calling won't get it back. <laughs> I'm quite shocked. So what were we talking about? Mr. Mr. Potter's quite unusually expensive camel hair coat. I would be very much happier, Mr. Potter, if you could just tell me where it came from. Uh, a camel? <laughs> Showing the shop where it was bought. Oh. Can't you show me one receipt for any, any of these things? Well, that is exactly where the thief was so vicious and so wicked. <laughs> Not only did he steal all my well beloved goods and chesspies, but he half the receipts for them as well. <laughs> well, I, I, I am going, I'm going to be absolutely honest, Professor. Oh, dear. You have sent in a claim asking us to pay out the sum of £825. <laughs> We are not prepared to pay it. I see. What are you prepared to go to? What are you prepared to go to? The model train exhibition. Oh, shut up. <laughs> now, Mr. Harbour, I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. Just to show that the money is of no importance to me. Knock off the odd 25 and make it around 800 pounds. Now, I tell you what I'm prepared to do. <laughs> Knock off the round 800 pounds and make it the odd 25. Done. Good. <laughs> that is very wise of you. Very wise of you, Professor Edwards. Now, here we are. Here we are. I have the money already in this envelope. There, there. Sense. A complete settlement of your burglary claim. Twenty-five, one pound note. Thank you very much, my dear fellow. May I say that you've been absolutely splendid about this whole sordid business. And good day. Good day, Professor. Good day. Good day. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Twenty-five beautiful pounds. Let's put it. Let's put it somewhere safe, in the vase on the on the mantelpiece here. Yeah. Oh, now, Potter, you can inform the lower third. The outing is on. <laughs> Please do hurry, Headmaster. We'll miss the train. Coming, coming, coming. I'm already there. By Jove, Potter! I must admit that there were times when I thought that this trip would never take place. <laughs> but all's well that. Hello, what's this note on the mantelpiece here? Well, it's from Ginger Perkins. Ginger Perkins? I didn't think he could write. <laughs> a reluctant burglar, remember? Listen to this, oh dear, dear headmaster. I see now that I was selfish in refusing to help you the other night. So this evening I got back into your study and stole a little something as you requested. <laughs> it's late in the day, isn't it, eh? We managed very well without his help. <laughs> Hello, there's a P.S. P.S. I didn't steal anything valuable. I only took that old vase off the mantelpiece. <laughs> well, thank heavens he only took the... The vase! The vase! The money in the vase! It's gone! It's gone! Oh, dear me! Hello, boys. Oh, I'm so pleased to see you. Uh, I've got some bad news to you about the outing. Uh, now, boys... What? No, 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 no. Don't look at me like that. I can explain everything. No, 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 boys. No violence. I can't! Oh, 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 oh,